initially I was going into the technical debt session, then I changed my mind. I said, that's a techie stuff. <laughs> Okay, uh, the way we will the way we will do this thing is so you can get in three groups. Okay. We'll, we'll time box it to two minutes per person. Okay, this is the object. Whosoever has this object only speaks. Me and Chitak will be taking, uh, keeping stock of the time. Okay, once you have done speaking, what I want you to do is take a post it, write your key code. Okay, whatever you wanted to convey. We'll take that post it over here, and that is what me and Chitak is going to present once we are doing these scrum of Right? Sounds like a plan? Please yeah, get yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let's distribute it. So, no, we don't distribute this. You don't break away this thing. Okay. So, anyone who is holding this only gets to speak. Otherwise, you know, we will not be able to do that. Okay. Who, uh, anyone who wants to take a chance, raise your hand. The next person, raise your hand. We'll try to follow a sequence. Okay. Don't, don't beat us up if you miss some. But okay, we'll try to give everyone a fair chance. Okay. Who wants to go first? So, the topic basically, let me give you a brief about the topic. We are talking about innovation, culture, and motivation. Now, I personally believe, unless until you have a culture in place, you can't have motivation and innovation, right? So the idea is how to have a culture in place so that our workforce A is motivated and B, they feel empowered enough to innovate, suggest ideas and do things. Yeah, I was just suggesting that maybe culture is something. And these kind of uh, motivation, innovation, and there's several other cultural aspects which comes into it and uh, which forms a hierarchy of that thing, of hierarchy of all these personal items. So the specific topic we want to talk about is culture in general, we can present it, how to uh, bring a cultural mindset change. With, so culture which I believe, my perspective is to have cultural change, it needs to be a mindset change. So for that, wh what I say is don't follow, their, don't follow the rules, make your own rules. So that from there, that part of innovation comes into place. And what we have been doing uh, so far is following the different uh, methodologies, different scrum, uh, different uh, frameworks, getting stamps of scientific certifications, and all. So we have left very limited scope of uh, left uh, leaving people with to innovate because we are imposing them with so, so such a huge list of parameters and methodologies and things. And uh, that, that, that brings in the motivation, uh, motivation uh, sorry, innovation part. So to keep it simple, like the video which was presented yesterday by Shankar. So that video, I can give an example is, so people followed that video, people were joining the uh, video session, uh, along with him, they were dancing with him. But they followed it their own way. He was half naked. Most of them, they didn't remove their shirts, t-shirt and started dancing with him. So they adapted him in a way which they felt suited for them. So instead of going towards the innovation part, you don't have to think from a closed mindset. You have to open the mindset and then adapt to it. Mm -hmm. And sorry, is it done? That's done. That's okay. done. So your name, I'm sorry. Sumit. So okay, thank you, Sumit. So can you summarize one or two, you know, bullet points? Yeah, just do that on the post-it. In the meantime, we'll go to the next person. Who wanna go next, sir? Here is your option. Your time is starting now. I mean, so when you're talking about accepted behaviors and a set of accepted conduct that people have to do, and the only way it builds into a culture is if you have folklore or stories around it. That's how, if you look at tribes, that's how cultures are built. If you look at an organization, they're no different. That's how cultures need to be built. So, I mean, if you're talking about a oh, culture will build and then motor innovation will come, no. We need to have those things, those ingredients first, and then we'll have people who are actually championing those so that you actually start to exhibit the ac accepted behaviors in this environment, you start putting your accepted uh, <coughs> exhibits in this and start to build folklore around it. So when new people come in, the kind of stories that are told is what will determine the culture of a tribe or an organization and, and nothing else. So I think what you need to do is, is take an example of the, the video that you were taking. That's, that, that's a good way of starting the change. But in sustaining the change, you are actually putting these things is very different. You need to have the change agents which will actually carry on for a while until we start figuring out this kind of folklore that is building up in the organization. When that is done, only then we can say that some sort of a culture is building in the organization. Because if you join the organization, where do we pick up things? We pick up things from our key conversations, not from the sessions that, that happen. 
what are the comments that go in, in, in that tea conversation is what the culture of the organization determines. I think everything needs to come and play into that for us to say that are we building a motivation, innovation, what kind of culture are we building? So it's, oh, my understanding is that the culture can only be built in isolation. They are to be well supported by structures in the organization. And when I say structure, there are many elements. It starts from the organizational design, the hierarchies, uh, the kind of reward and recognition system we have. So having a hierarchical structure and people having their own objectives is good. And then trying to create a team behavior where my goal is not aligned with the team goal. It's not going to implicate any culture. Where people are rewarded and recognized for individual achievement, no matter what kind of framework or methodology or process you introduce, I don't, I, it doesn't fit with my objective at all. So as long as we want to inculcate culture in my way, it is to be supported by a well-defined structure as well. We need to look at how people perceive their goal is aligned with an organization. But I am under tremendous pressure for delivery. And my goals, my achievements are rewarded with those meeting the delivery. I don't care about innovation. I, I don't even feel like it. So no matter whether I'm trying from outside or inside, if there are not structures enough to support, the culture uh, will not sustain that. <coughs> I think just asking them that, you know, this is how you need to do it. So once you do it yourself, they'll see that you are doing it as a leader of the team. The team would automatically start following you. Once they know why you're doing it and what is the value in, inside it, so they'll start doing it. And secondly, the, the motivation factor is, it's not always the rewards and recognition at the end of the sprint or at the end of the release that matter. Even every day in every daily scrum when you are having a stand-up, Anything that a person A did, you know, yesterday, A did this thing which helped us, you know, uh, have the build out immediately. B fixed a defect instantly, which you know saved time on the testing. So this developer did this, this QA person did this, and the appreciation within this daily scrum is really a very simple tool to keep the entire team motivated. Okay, awesome innovation, right? Not because he was rewarded by something. He was actually passionate about you know, changing or, or delivering a value in your you know, everybody else. So my belief is that if I actually work as a like a missionary's work, where they actually have a purpose, where where each individual is seeing that I when I work in a company, I actually just not even do I, uh, do the job and make money my salary and I deliver to my manager's expectations. But if I actually am working in this company to make changes to you know, a larger society as a whole, there's a mission to the company that I have. And if I'm aligned to that mission, then I would I would definitely want to innovate. And certainly, if, if the company's the head mindset is coming from that perspective, I mean, it would automate, it would be automatic. I mean, that's what my belief is. But if my, like, if a company is about making money, you know, like kind of exploiting you and uh, and making money on you. If I if I want to exploit you and make all the money on my own, forget it. You can't get it. So that's what it is. Okay. Yes, basically from flexibility, empowerment, and learning opportunities. The organization structure should be in a way that people should be able to move role. I just get bored of doing development. Can I do some? Can I play a different role? So. People will move around in the organization, they will bring different perspectives. Innovation is nothing but, it's about, you can, some innovation can be heroic, like somebody really come up with a brilliant idea. But most of the innovations are like 1 plus 1 11. One, somebody is promoting some idea, somebody is building on top of it. Then someone else coming on, building further on top of it. Then, then we get the real innovation. Or somebody just saying that, okay, your idea is good, but here are the issues. So it's more about brainstorming, it's about building on top of each other's ideas. But for that, we need to have that culture of collaboration, flexibility, different perspective, diversity. And obviously the hygiene factors at the bottom. Okay, awesome. I think you're... For a company, for employees or any stakeholder, they are doing it for themselves. So if they are uh, using these three things uh, to motivate people or anything, so that is, there is a, some strategies there. So what the company is getting out of implementing all these things, so that is the crux of it. If, uh, by motivating people, what actually it is, uh, what company is getting, like uh, you know, he talked about Apple. So any
innovation, out of innovation, if that is the vision of the company to innovate things, so definitely company is looking out of something. If people are starting innovating, so they are getting something of, uh, from the whatever the people are, the desires are they, they are carrying with them. So I think it, uh, it like uh, in the airport we have uh, full strategy. So they put up the things and people go there. So if, if we want to implement, the, I mean, if the company has certain uh, things uh, in mind that this is the way the, uh, if we put people in, like if we have a gym in our, uh, our uh, I mean, campus, so uh, everybody knows that in the free time people will go into the gym. So something, uh, company is also getting out of that. The energy levels are increased or the people are uh, energetic, some kind, uh, kind of the things. So I think this is completely based on the company's objective of uh, providing things. Right. So can you just like you say that company is doing for money, when they will start the company to make money, to make profit, and whenever whatever they do for employees, they want to get benefit out of it. But again, what's, what's the point? So my point is that whatever the company is doing, a uh, uh, company is getting something out of it, right? So if, uh, so, like uh, in our office, I'm working in TCS and we get a, a, a meal every a Monday, Monday meal. So this is kind of a culture the company is creating that, that people, uh, every Monday people do not want to come to the office and they are also in the company. So like, thank you. The fact of, you know, uh, if, if, a, if a team is working in a retired environment, then everybody, there is no rank, there is no title. So what is the, you know, how how we can motivate that or what is the next level for a person or how we can go into the, you know. So I was thinking that if we can, you know, we can, uh, we can divide uh, the skill level of a certain team depending on how much experience they have or what kind of project they can handle. I mean, initially uh, somebody who joined in, joins in a lower level of the team and later on he joins in a higher level of team and depending on that his, his level of expertise begin and he can enjoy the different uh, experiences that he can have and of course going ahead he can have the higher compensation and higher experience also. So I mean that's I mean that's the only thing that I can think of that in ways that you know you are right now part of, of a basic team that you are going advanced and then advanced and then advanced and that's the only way I can think that you know we can motivate the uh, Small developers. So you're looking at that level in the next. Uh, Do you think it's a real scenario? Uh, just 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 wait. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a, the Never mind. Person who can review a code, and there is a junior person who can actually do that one QA, one BA. So, actually, Scrum team needs a combination of all. I cannot say that this is a basic team where for one junior QA, one junior developer, one junior BA, and they, they are going to produce something. I don't think they are, they are going to produce anything. So, we, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, it's a question like, are, are, should we be able to do that? Or suppose I have architect who is working with me from last six years, and if I say that, you know, you're you're getting good. We are at the developer level. I do not have a role to offer you. He's gonna stay with me. So I'm, I'm just asking how these practical things can be handled. <coughs> oh, okay. You know. So so if you can just summarize your question on a post-it, anyone more not happening? But you know, in Scrum, Scrum, there are a lot of agile teams working together. They always be. Uh, you know, if they are working towards a simple goal, the same goal, or different projects. I'm talking about they are working towards the same goal, maybe different projects. But there is a, always there is a hierarchy, there is a very expert team and there is a very low level team who is a, you know, consists of a very beginner level and there is a very advanced level. There is always going to be scrum or scrum, there is always a higher end and there is a lower end. And the lower end always wants to go into the higher end. So, yeah. I think this is the time. Yeah, yeah. First of all, we, let me put the one defining the culture. So, which Nitin has nicely put. So, it's about set up accepted behavior. Uh, and then he added like the structure, the organization structure should be in a way that it should support the culture, the build up of the culture. But at the same time, people should have flexibility to break the rules to get the right outcome, rather than always following the rules. So that was fully inside. So I'm just kind of relating and trying to build a small. Do you have any thoughts? And then I added two things like one of one of the things required as per the Maslow's framework is hygiene factor should be there, and on top of that, to build further innovation, we need to have a collaboration culture. And for collaboration culture, there could be multiple things. One is the leadership, the top leadership to lead by example. 
they appreciate the everyday collaboration, everyday effort. It should be driven by a mission, clear goals, values, those should be there at the top level. And then we should be breaking the silos. There will be learning opportunity for the people because generally we all are knowledge workers. We are driven by learning opportunity. People should be able to change roles based on their capability or based on their aspiration or a combination of this. So that at least they have got some driving force. And then hierarchical identity, I think that's we were debating still. So, Thank you.